Hello and welcome to another episode of our Hattrick series. I'm Duper Daddy. I hope you're well today. Spring is upon us. Got to cut my grass this weekend. Anyone else cutting their grass? Remember, don't cut it right down. Trim it first. Wait a week and just keep them going down a level. Give it a scarifier. Overseed it. And then it should be sorted for the year. We will see. That's what I do anyway. I get lovely green fit grass and that's how it rolls, I guess. Back into Hattrick. In today's series, we're going to go through what happened last season, pick up from last video because I just quickly put out an update. We're going to go through our youth. How, how is it performing? I've made some graphs to show you that we obviously we've done three cycles so far and that is defending, defending, passing and then we go into our last cycle of playmaking. This will be the last cycle for some players because obviously we was doing playmaking just as normal. We didn't really change our training cycle. After this season, we're going to say goodbye to some players but there is a reason behind it. Their value looks amazing. Oh, I bidded for a player last night and we won it. Let's go have a look. Right, here we are. As you can see, let me introduce you to your new player. We paid 2.5 million. Is that a club record? I'm not too sure. I'll have to have a look. It's a lot of money. I mean, we had 4 million. We had 4 million all last season. Didn't really spend anything. We have brought a new goalkeeper, Marco Sarv. Welcome to the club. He's 25 years old. Our current goalkeeper is 27. So it's two years younger and his stats are better. Obviously, or I wouldn't bring him in. Our goalkeeper was getting six stars, but this goalkeeper is getting an average of seven. So that's one star more. So let's just have a quick look at him and then we'll just go compare. So he's a 12 keeper, eight defending and 14 supernatural. Maybe we could put him in a defending slot because obviously we're only training six core. So we do have those additionals when we're training. Maybe we could get, try and get his passing up as well. So if I jump over to to uh current number one Lech Neckman. now i'm gonna sell him because i can get a million back for him so that means that i would have only spent a million and a half for upgrade so his keeping is 10 versus our new goalkeeper who's 12 defending same as each other passing he had five i believe it was set pieces he's got 12 and our new guy's got 14 so a little bit of it increase there which is really really cool and as you can see he was getting five sixes uh our new goalkeeper gets seven quite on a consistent basis as well how did last season go for us as you can see we brought in a new goalkeeper but again i'm always looking to improve this season we're doing playmaking so we will go to a three five two formation we're going to play two wing backs and one center Just really strengthen up that defense but last season this is how it looked helix our first game of the season as you can see i forgot to choose my team but i was only missing one player but that's literally sending off all game and i didn't start my best team as well so we ended up getting battered five nil then i remember to choose my team and we played husky united away we won 4-1 remember husky united because when we played them at home it was a bit of a shocker then we played Newark Rangers. If we go to a lineup, I forgot to choose my team and we was missing three players, four players. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we only chose eight players and we forfeited the game. So that's two losses already. Played three games. It wasn't a great start to the season. And then we go in and play Ifly. We lose 3-1 was expected and then i was like you know what i need to choose my team I need to choose my team we then played derby who's probably a bot team 9-0 best city bot team 6-0 then we played selhurst i think selhurst got relegated last season pulled out a two-all draw some strange reason i think it was in the last video i was saying oh i'm disappointed we should have won that i think in my mindset is that the only team i should have lost against is ifly but actually selhurst has actually got a good team we then played at our home and we beat them 2-0. Then we played for the best city, Derby, won that, lost to Ifley. It's always going to be a case. Ifley didn't even lose a game all season. They've been building and building. I don't know, when is it going to be where I'm not in a transition phase anymore? You, obviously, you still want to do your training cycle, but when is it going to stop? I guess when I'm happy with my first team. I'm nearly there. I think now that I've brought in that goalkeeper, maybe because I've now playing playmaking, my wingers are weak. And I was thinking maybe I could bring in two million pound players and then sell them at the end of the season. They would have got a bit of playmaking training. So maybe they would have hold their value. We'll look at values of players in a minute because the way I'm doing things, 
uh, moment were pretty profitable. I don't know about any of you who play this game inside out and know a few secrets. Let me know. But I think we're doing all right. As a casual player, I think we're doing all right. And I'm enjoying it. I'm still enjoying it. And I think if, if Lee's got promoted, I think it's going to be between me and Selhurst to win the league next season. But we'll have a look at that in a minute. And then we beat Newark Rangers 4-1. I think Newark Rangers are gone. Helix is gone. And then we've, uh, we drew against Husky United at home. I was shocked. I was like, how? I chose my team. All chosen. No disrespect to Husky, but we drew against them. We had 10 chances to their two. So I'm not too sure how we drew that and we held possession 75 percent each half and then we beat helix at helix 4-0 cups uh we didn't do too well with cups but i never i never try never gonna win it so there's no point in my eyes maybe if i'm in division two division one then obviously that's a outlook right but that's when you've got to have some strong team so here's last season we came third again exact same as last season point above Newark Rangers and two points behind Selhurst. If we chose those teams and we won those games, that was six points. And that would have obviously got us sec second, clearly as well. So that would have put us on 32 points. Top scorers, Sanon, our new striker, our star striker for us. He gets 13 goals. He didn't get top goal scorer. But look at Ifley. And I think this is something that I'm probably lacking is that he's got three class strikers. Who's getting him 12, 11, 11. Whereas I got two. You got me 13 and 10. But they are getting better. Especially Ludwig. And I do. I think I do have three good strikers. But obviously for the other one. David Firk. Who I'm thinking about selling. Obviously Ifley's not in this list anymore. But we do have Barmy Brummies. They look like a good team. Actually because they got relegated. They might just be like... Yeah, I'm not playing this game anymore. Fingers crossed. But going by these stats, we are second at the moment with the adjustment of the formation and carrying on our training cycle. Maybe, maybe we could push even further. You go down to the graph here for power rating and we always have a bit of a dip, but that's me probably transitioning my team. But we always go up and I think that's for key there. Wow, they've been stable around that for ages they just haven't pushed on have they they've pushed on a little bit from some of the gaps so no more ifly no more ifly and it's nearly a full lineup of actual human players just one bot team there if you want to join my league if you never played this come and join actually probably not a division five trying to hope get division six I joined, not picking a league but I joined by just setting up a new team uh, and I Got relegated straight away, won Division 6 and went up and that's it. I've been in Division 5 ever since. We are constructing our stadium again. I always look at this every uh, end of every season. And we are constructing an extra nearly 3,000 terraces, 1,500 basic seating, seats under roof, 1,500, nearly 150 VIP boxes. Because last four games of our home, it's virtually sold out. Before I go into my Excel spreadsheet, I think we best do a youth pool. First things first, I need to get rid of any overage players. Get rid of Sack. Yes, not going to put him in my first team. A view. Let's see what we get. Cool. Weak, weak, inadequate. 16. Nope. Cool. Inadequate, inadequate. Poor. 15. Want a solid keeper. No. Cool. 15. Inadequate. Weak. Oh, defending this guy might re well reach solid in this department. Yes, and he's 15. We will take him. Yes, that's a good one. Like it. Let's add him into my team. Let's give him a number so that we remember. Number two, that'll do. And then players. And then we go by shirt number. Who we got so far. So we've got a passing a player, passing uh, solid seven. 15 years old. Then we've got a solid defending who we've just brought through now. And then we've got a 17 year old with solid defending, solid playmaking. He could be good too. There. Gotta watch that 15 days, so a couple of weeks, promote him. And that's it. Right. We're going to jump out of the game and go into my Excel spreadsheet. And what I will just quickly go through on this to finish the video of is where we're at with the player's value, which we'll, we'll do last. To finish it off before then we will just go through for free training cycles that we've done so far and obviously we're finishing off with playmaking so it'd be interesting to see if there's any trends uh, that we can take any learnings from 
which I will do in another video. We're looking to, into more detail. Just a quick overview then. Here's some graphs I pulled out from for data. In season 81, we did defending. What these counts are is for defending skill points. You know, you got solid, excellent and all that. This is from the entire squad, not just of for training players because sometimes when injuries happen I actually might chuck in a player who's not one of our main players and I think it's right to do anyway and if it's going to grow it's going to grow so we've got 67 to 113 so it's a 46 difference so we went up 46 skill points in defending amazing some weeks I did miss you might notice for instance one two threes missing fours missing so there might be a step up but the main thing is is that beginning number and that end number and then we had in season 82 we did defending again and in this time we started 116 and we ended up with 142 we went up only 26 points now i mean i've got week one to week 16 data so i would need to do a deep dive why did we get 46 why did we get 26 and at the moment i believe that maybe in the first couple of weeks maybe that first week or for the first few weeks is that's when i was bringing in defending players so hence it goes from low then we're changing from playmaking to defending so it actually might be from 96 so if we did it 96 67 you only get 17 so maybe it's 86 as such to try and balance out the scores and maybe that's more accurate and then that difference of that where it was 45 was where i brought in those players but i'm going to have a look at that anyway and then we move over to passing and in passing you can train 10 players core in passing which is amazing and i think that's why i've probably got quite a big growth here so if we go it went 96 to 146 uh, 147 sorry and that was a 51 increase and that kind of makes sense because within here i've only got probably three youngsters who train obviously faster because i think once they go past 22 23 uh, it start well as they get older anyway it starts getting uh, less often that they're gonna ping and if i'm doing 10 core versus six core in defending it kind of makes sense that it's going to be double or near enough double so i'm happy with that I'm happy with the growth. So in total, if you take it in that manner, that's 104 point growth. Or if we include that actually we brought in at that time, at the beginning, to strengthen my defense anyway, you're more looking at an overall of 123. We look at passing and you will see here all the yellows are where they pinged. And it's quite consistent. And I think I got most of the weeks. One, two, three, four, five, six and seven missing there. And hence why there's bit more yellows amongst the numbers there then 9 10 11 13 14 15 16 so yeah so it's just that middle bit there that i missed but it's captured here of the difference that's uh, being taken but a good indication of the average is that for average per person we went up two skill points per person average and if you look across the yellows and that kind of makes sense it's actually above two per person okay so that's where we're at and I will continue driving in. Maybe I'll have some more graphs to show you as we go along. And then we have our team. And currently in key stats, these ones here, where I've got them highlighted. Obviously defending, we've got 13 across our team. Uh, that's position average. Yes. So that's just uh, across our core because we're playing three out the back. So it's 13. We're playing five in midfield. We're playing two wingers and so forth. And our weakness is wingers. And that's where I was saying earlier that might invest a little bit of money just for this season and then sell them at end of season because we want to be strong going into seasons and i think that's where i've been quite bad at doing before obviously we haven't put in our new goalkeeper into the sheet yet that will be uh, next week next friday that he'll get added in so that will jump up that number but we will be selling him but 12 so 12 and 7 would be a good average to work out which would be 12 and 7 it would be 9.5 so it goes up a point in average okay for that position which is great it's great so it costs us a million to go up a point in goalkeeping goalkeepers are expensive and we're only in division five so i do want to play the part of that i've got other areas to spend money on as i said wingers I took this data for other day when I was updating the sheet, so Friday. And what this means is this is the brought value and this is what the median value is. I always go by median. Don't know why. It seems to be the more realistic one when I'm buying players and when I'm selling players, they tend to sell for this price or more. So it's a good starting point. 
and that's when I look at players as well. I do transfer compare. And if people are asking for more than the median, there's just no point in me putting a bid, to be fair. But as you can see, if I I bought this squad for 13 million, if I sold this squad in today's market, I would get 27.6 million. That's a difference of 14.3 million. So all that improvement that we're getting into our team, which again, that's where something I want to show. But I did show you for power rating where we're going up, it goes down. Where we do the transition of the training cycle, it goes down and then goes back up. But there's growth there. And I do want to pull off my own graph to show growth. But this is that we've improved our team by not spending that much money. But actually, if you think about it, we haven't spent any money because our team is in profit of those improvements. I bought that team for 13 million. I can sell it now for 27.6 million. So we've got good growth, 14 million profit. Now there is some ups and downs to the for numbers behind this. We'll go through for negatives first. They are kind of negatives and they're kind of not because Zanon and Ferk was never brought in. Yeah, and if I go Lechman as well, because they're for key big numbers there. Those three players was brought in as A-teamers, you know, to come in and do a job, not to get trained, but to come in and do a job. To be fair to all of them, they've done a job. And if it costs me that amount of money, because they're getting older and we're not training them. So obviously their value is going to decrease. That's only natural. And when I bought them, I knew that as well. That's why when I said that I can sell Lechman for a million and a half, yeah, we bought him for two million, near enough. But we've just bought a new goalkeeper who's going to improve our team. Once I sold hit sell him, that improvement's only going to cost me a million. And then maybe down the line, it's just going to be that. Maybe going forward, each time I upgrade my goalkeeper, it's going to cost me a million. That's how you'd look at it. And that's investment into my team of where I'm making from my youth, which is here. That's where we go into the next one. Cochrane, Ludwig. These are all our old playmaking players where I've, been, I've kept them on to improve them in because I know that we was doing passing. And I was like, well, we do defending, defending, passing. And then we go start again in playmaking. We already done playmaking with them two, three times. So it kind of makes sense to keep them on. Do for playmaking, get rid of them, bring in new defenders and then reinvest money or keep them in my team. I'll probably keep them, actually. I probably won't sell them. They will probably be my core in midfielders. And then what we do is reinvest in new defending. And then what we do is once we get, what, Yeop, Rimmel and who's my other one? Abojo through. They are most likely going to be my core players. And then I can look at changing into another training cycle maybe and give that a chance. Maybe go goalkeeper and see if I can get top, top goalkeeper trained and do a full cycle. But I have to take it with a bit of a pinch of salt is that if I do that, I get one core and one selling. And how much money is that going to bring in compared to what I'm bringing in these? I don't know. I'd have to have a look. I'd have to look. Or we could do a forward, which I'm... I'm leaning towards because that's a six core like defending. That is my season 83 review. A lot of information to give out, but I'm only going to be doing these videos. I think I'm just going to do an end of season review. I think it's more interesting. Don't do a mid season. What I might do is just to update you if there's an important game. If I get time, I will record live reaction of that game and release it as a short. Maybe that's probably a better thing or if there's an update i might sign a player i might do a short of it of why i've brought that player but we'll see you know what to do give this video a like so it goes out to the world and if you want to see more hit that subscribe button have a good day see you soon